Hello and welcome in. My name is Mark, aka the Markster. This is video 10 in the FreeCAD series. Today I'm using version 0 0.19, revision number 19.5.10, and this is Windows 10. Today I'm going to talk to you about the placement task that we can use to move our objects in 3D space. In previous videos, I would right click an object and use the dragger tool or directly manipulate the placement task, uh, the placement properties. But there is a <clears throat> dialog we can open <clears throat> called the placement task that offers some additional tools. Every object in FreeCAD that we can manipulate in the 3D view has a placement property. The placement property consists of the location, x, y, and z coordinates, the rotation angle, and the rotation axis. Those define the location and the rotation of the object. When we talk about the location of an object, we're talking about where in 3D space is that object's focal point. Each object has a focal point. With the cube, it is the lower front corner vertex on the left side. If we toggle our axis cross in the view menu, you can see that this vertex by default is located at the origin. So if we move our cube away from the origin, we see that at in this case 500 zero, zero, is referring to this point. If we're going to rotate our object we can select an axis of rotation x, y, or z or we can define a vector. This vector contains the direction from the origin to a point on the unit sphere centered about the origin. This is a normalized vector. And that defines the direction of the axis. The axis of rotation is the point defined in the center coordinates that contains a line that is parallel to the selected axis or the custom axis if we choose to define one. To see this in action, let us select an angle to rotate. And you see that we're rotating about the z-axis. But it is not just the z-axis. We're rotating around the point contained in a line that is parallel to the z-axis. In this particular case, it is the z-axis. If we choose the center of mass of the object, we can rotate around. I had no object selected. That's the reason for that warning. We can rotate around 
the center of mass. Now, no object was selected when I clicked center of mass and that's why it did not populate this properly at first. So we're rotating around the axis which is in the center of mass a line running through the center of mass parallel to the z-axis in this particular case. If we use the x-axis we're rotating around a, a rotation an, an axis of rotation that is a line parallel to the x axis this red line it contains this coordinate <clears throat> let's add a line to illustrate this a port line primitive and I'm going to put it at 5, 5, 15, 5, 5, minus, minus 10. <clears throat> So here is a line passing through the center of the cube that is parallel to the z-axis. So if we <coughs> choose center of mass, <coughs> excuse me, and the z-axis, we're rotating about that line. I just put the line to illustrate that this is the axis of rotation. If I move that line with the dragger tool, okay, open up our placement task. I can, in fact, select two points on this line hold down the uh, select the selected points button and rotate about that line any two points that we select on that line can serve that purpose it need not be the endpoints. For example, I can select one endpoint and just anywhere on the line, holding down the control key, click selected points, and you see that the Z coordinate was 5.838220. By the way, I have my in my settings. I have more units of precision than perhaps you are seeing on your screen. This is in Edit Preferences. Let's see where units, yes, general and units, and number of decimals. That's why I have six decimals here. You might only have two by default. <clears throat> so let us suppose we would like to rotate around this edge. We can select two points on the edge, click selected points, and rotate about that edge. If 
we want to further rotate around this edge, we need to apply the changes. We need to click Apply Incremental Changes. It's very important. Select two points on this edge, which can be the two endpoints. Click Selected Points. Now we see we have created automatically for us a custom axis. This is a normalized vector. It's represented by the point on a sphere that is radius 1 centered on the origin. So from the origin, the point at 0, 0, 0, to this point here is the direction that is the direction we have a line parallel to that line and running in that same direction containing this point that is the axis of rotation Now if we open back up our placement task, notice our position has changed. This is the position of that focal point. And we are rotated at this angle along this axis. We have another option for rotating using Euler angles, which is the yaw pitch and roll or around these axes used to be referred to as yaw pitch and roll but I see they have changed it for the axis so we can rotate around the axis independently using these three degrees or we can use one angle degree and a predefined axis, whichever you prefer. <clears throat> the selected points option works with this, not with the Euler angles. Okay, now let's suppose we would like to move this new cube to position it, let me hide this line. Let's suppose we want to position this cube to sit atop this cube. How would we go about moving that so that it is aligned with this cube? We can use the placement task for this process. First we select the point to move and a destination point, holding down the control key and then holding down the shift key. This is on Windows, might be different on Mac. Press selected points while holding down the shift key. We see in the report view the distance between those two points. We also have created a custom axis running between those two points. We have it in the clipboard so we can paste into the axial spin box and select apply axial to move the object in that direction. So the way to explain axial motion Think of the Earth. The Earth is spinning on its axis. The axis runs from the North Pole down through the center of the Earth to the South Pole. Imagine we build a tunnel 
and put in an elevator to run from the North Pole to the South Pole. If you are in that elevator moving from one to the other, you are moving in the axial direction. Apply axial moves your object along the axis defined here by this amount of points by this amount of distance in the axial spin box. If by accident it moves in the wrong direction you can hold down the shift button and click apply axial to go in the opposite direction or without shift in that direction. These are floating point values. They're only as precise as can be allowed because you have a limited number of memory, limited, um, limited amount of memory assigned to contain each value, a floating point value. So there's always going to be some imprecision. So now the next step is to rotate the cube to align it with the other one. Since we have already applied a movement, we should apply that and click Apply Incremental Changes. This will clear out these values, but leave the object where it is. This is preparing to make a second move relative to the first. If you don't click this, it's not going to work right. So for this, we select the pivot point, if we can, and two points to move. So I'll select this point and this one to connect together. Hold it down the shift key, click selected points. This has created the, act, the plane that contains all three selected points and created an axis that is normal to that plane. That is the axis here. The angle needed to rotate against that axis is saved in the clipboard. We can paste it here, control V, and we will need to have a negative number sometimes. So we press a minus button there and we can apply that. Now we need to rotate to finish our alignment. We select first the pivot point, holding down the control key, select the other two points, shift key, selected points. The shift key causes this angle we see in the report view to be copied to the clipboard. Otherwise, we'd have to come here and copy it. and then we can paste it in and use a negative number apply so now we have our two cubes more or less aligned to the precision capable with these floating point numbers let's do another example We'll hide these with with cylinders. <clears throat> this is a little bit more difficult. Notice the cylinder focal point is the center of the bottom face. Whereas the cube was the front left corner on the bottom. A sphere 
would be the center of the sphere. That would be the focal point for a sphere. So let's just uh, use the dragger tool, drag this around, and choose some uh, some random angle. <clears throat> and create another cylinder. Now I would like to move this cylinder on top of that one. Open the placement task. And let's use this point and this point. Shift key down. Selected points, paste, apply axial, apply, apply incremental changes. Now how do we rotate to get these two into perfect alignment? Let's use the seam line again. Click that point, this point, and this point. Hold down shift key, selected points, paste our angle, and plus 180 degrees apply we're close but not exactly we need to do one more rotation problem is what points can we select to know that we're selecting the same points on each edge. So for that, let's okay to close this. Let's create a couple of points. Create, create, close. Let me delete these objects that we no longer need. Okay. So what I will do is map to the edge of this cylinder with one. I want to choose Z tangent to edge not concentric, that would put it in the center. I want a point on the edge of each. Now let's do the other edge, the other point, this one. Map to that edge. Z tangent to edge. Okay, now F5 to recompute. We see that both of these vertexes, or vertices if you prefer, are on the seam line. We don't want them there. We want them out here. So what we need to do is change this map path parameter. This is a value from 0 to 1. It represents the starting point and ending point. So let's put that at point five. Let's try point two five. How about that? There you are right there. 
doing this other one, let's set this parameter to 0.25. Now they're both close. All right. So now we should be able to rotate our cylinder. Be sure to click apply incremental changes. Let's switch to points mode. Now we can see our points easier. Select this point, control key down, the other two points, shift key down, hold down the shift key, selected points, control V to paste, negative key, and let's see what's going on. Why is this point no longer on the edge? Okay, that was just it needed to be refreshed, I guess. So it looks like we are in alignment now. So that's how you use the placement task dialog. Apply axial will move your object. Let's select this one to move. Apply incremental changes. Move your object along the axis we can move for example one millimeter at a time we have to hit select points right and then apply axial to move in that direction shift axial Shift apply axial to go the opposite direction. One millimeter at a time. Or if we want to go more, 10 millimeters at a time. Shift key for the opposite direction. To create an axis, we select two points. Holding down control key, selected points to define the axis, apply axial to move, axial motion. To rotate around that axis, select two points, any two points. Click selected points and rotate about the axis. And to rotate between between uh, three points we select first the pivot point and with the control key down the other two points the shift key down selected points button and we can paste into the angle the direction to rotate many times we need a negative angle uh, when Working with these cylinders, I added 180 to get 180 degrees more turn. Well, that's going to be it for today. Hopefully, 
I've communicated to you how to use that those uh, those buttons in there I was the one who actually coded those features into the placement task with some help and guidance from Vernon Meyer who is the lead developer in the FreeCAD project so I know there's been a lot of confusion on how to use those features so hopefully this will shed some light on that as always I thank you for watching and have a great day